five things I wish someone told me when I first started my podcast. Before I get into my five things, I should probably tell you that my podcast, The Thoughts Not Podcast, is produced by my husband, Will. So, I identify and recruit the talent and handle scheduling, those folks, and I'm the person you see in front of the camera. Everything about my role makes perfect sense to me, but there's nothing about his role that makes sense to me. This leads to my first thing. I am astounded by the amount of work that goes into a podcast. People make it look so easy, but it isn't. I thought episodes would be taped and then aired. No. My husband spends hours upon hours editing the videos, audio, and visual aspects. And I'm like, there's no way everyone spends this much time on their podcast, but we do. Number two, we're inundated with podcasts and the competition is stout. I didn't realize this at all because I have never been a podcast listener. So starting my own podcast was foreign territory for me. I've learned that you must be savvy with promotions. Otherwise, people won't see your podcast. The best way to promote a podcast is to be a guest on other people's podcast. When your last name isn't Kardashian, you got to work 10 times as hard to get people to tune in. And consistency is imperative. Don't even bother with promoting if you aren't consistent. Because I wasn't that familiar with podcast, I didn't realize that we would have to air one episode weekly. I thought we could air an episode per month. No. My podcast is very new. We aired the first episode on June 4th. I've already learned not to stress over the promo. I focus on making content that'll help people enhance their lives, whether providing information about healing your physiology, attracting abundance, and various other life hacks. Number three, making good content is way more difficult than I ever imagined. Now, I love to interview people, but when you have to be consistent with cranking out excellent interviews, you better be good at what you do. When my husband and I decided to start this podcast, I had feelings of grandeur. I envisioned myself laughing and talking with all these cool, highly educated people. And I mean, I certainly do that, but I underestimated the difficulty. When you haven't met someone before you interview them, you never know how the chemistry will be between the two of you. And when the chemistry is lacking, which is no one's fault, you better be good at what you do. So I've learned to over prepare. I cannot emphasize how much time that takes because you can't ramble. If you ramble, you waste people's time and they will not listen to you. I usually have a script as a crutch in case I lose my train of thought. And on that note, I want to point out that you must cater to your people. Going into this, no one told me this, but I instinctively knew that I had to deliver a podcast that would benefit my target audience. My audience wants all the information they can get so they can enhance their lives and be healthy and wealthy. So my content is very specific. Now the guests on my show are quite diverse and come from all walks of life, but they all share one commonality. They have a rare skill set that they use to help people who are struggling. I created the Thoughts Not Podcast to leave my listeners in better shape than they were when they tuned in, and I stand by that. I guarantee that each episode delivers something that will help you improve your circumstances, and I'm very consistent with that. Number four, sound matters. I underestimated the importance of producing a podcast with superior audio quality. I can't believe the amount of equipment my husband has purchased to ensure the sound quality is superior. We've gone through many different microphones, and he says the Shure SM7B is the best. Those microphones are $400. And so there's a mixer 
that all the microphones go into, and it's called Zoom Pod Track P8. It costs five hundred and fifty dollars. Both of these items can be purchased on Amazon. These two pieces of equipment are the only things you really need to record a podcast. Now you can record a podcast cheaper, but you sacrifice the sound quality. And while we're talking about sound, I thought I would be able to move around and have fun with my guest and chew gum if I wanted and snack around. No, 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 no. If I move around too much, cough, clear my throat, chew gum, basically make any kind of noise, that creates more editing work for my husband, Will. So, not only do I have to be laser focused on what my guests are saying, but I also have to stay mindfully aware of how much I'm moving around and you know how I'm sitting and stuff. Number five, the last thing. Will turned a room in our basement into a professional studio. I'm sitting in it now. This is where we filmed the podcast. So I'm set up to have both in-person and virtual guests. Now I wish someone had told me how difficult virtual interviews are compared to in-person interviews. I prefer in-person interviews by far, and here's why. Now, we're new at this, so there are growing pains. But any technical issues we have had, those have happened with virtual interviews. In-person interviews take off without any glitches. With the virtual interviews, I've learned to plan an additional 30 minutes just in case of sound and audio issues. Another thing I didn't know was how much easier it is to connect with someone face to face than to interview them via Zoom. It's an energy thing. Usually, I can read someone quickly, whether that's through a computer screen or in person. But when it comes to podcast interviews, the energy is so much higher when we're right here in the studio. So those are the five things I wish someone had told me. And I'll close with telling you this. If you start a podcast, make sure you love the show. You got to love your show. Otherwise, you'll burn out quickly, especially if you stress over how many people are listening. Now, my podcast gets pretty decent traffic, but that's because I've spent the last three years building a strong online presence. So that's important, too. So before I close out, would you like to see the studio? I'll show you. All right, I'm giving you the grand tour here of our podcast studio, and it's a little messier than usual because we've been moving stuff around. So all of those black things on the wall, that's, uh, to, that's something to ensure sound quality. This is a whisper room. Now, this is not something we use regularly for the podcast, but it's an audio booth. That's where I recorded my audio book. Here is where I sit during each interview. And you see all those cameras? Look at this. And again, my understanding of all of this equipment is very basic. This is all my husband's thing. The microphone that I mentioned, the uh, the Shure, S-H-U-R-E, that's it right there, okay? So you see all these lights? Look at this, isn't that something? All these different cameras. And then I'll take you over here, and it's just a ton of equipment that I don't really know a whole lot about. But all of these cords and all of these TVs, this makes sense to Will. And I guess that's all that matters. <laughs>